Have y'all ever seen this before? This white fluffy stuff they're telling me is actually water in the form of snow. Now I don't get a lot of that in Texas, but I'm actually visiting Colorado for a couple of days. And when I'm here, I made a trip over to Fort Collins. I'm actually going to visit, I'm in the driveway of a house under construction by an architect who's building his personal house. And we're gonna be visiting this right here. This is Greg Fisher's house. This is a passive house under construction with some really cool details for cold climates, including some double stud construction, some really high performance glass, and a couple things that I've not seen before, uh, including some bark for siding. So let's go see if we can find Greg, the owner. Today's build show coming to you from Colorado. We're talking cold weather construction. Hey, Greg, there he is. How's it going, buddy? Good, good to meet you. Man, I really appreciate you having me out, Greg. Yeah, no, thanks for coming. This is a cool project. Now, I'm seeing, first off, Greg, straight away that you've got no overhangs on this house. And that seems to be fairly typical on high-performance houses, but give us the, uh, the mindset architecture-wise on your house here. Yeah, so aesthetically, we wanted no overhangs on most of the masses, just like that clean, pure look. But then we've introduced overhangs where you need them. So all of the southern glass has overhangs. All of the, the western we try to do some protection on. It's tougher to hit, handle western and eastern face glass because the sun is lower in that time of day when the sun is shining there but more more about aesthetics on those gable ends so yeah, yeah that makes sense yeah but from a performance perspective normally i think of no overhangs so that we can run our weather barrier our air barrier from the foundation over the ridge of the house and then on back down yeah is, is that the case for you here that is the case yeah that definitely simplifies the detailing and the connectivity of all that weather barrier and vapor barrier and so forth oh man look at this i love the steel that you've got going on here Thanks. Greg. this is really cool this is all going to be exposed i'm assuming it right? is yeah steel? yeah it'll be cleaned up we'll get the rust off of it and uh try to try to coat it in a way that it still looks natural but more consistent yeah cool yeah and so you've got these kind of uh, gabled forms going on here. Where, what's the inspiration for this architecturally? Yeah, so this property where is, is actually part of an old cherry mill. Um, if you look off over in this direction, you can kind of see the remnants of that cherry mill. It's now a house. It's been added on to 14 million times. Uh -huh. uh, but it was a cherry mill. There was several cherry orchards in the area. And so we kind of use that as a metaphor for the design. We're calling the house Mill House. And the mill is part of the, the cherry mill metaphor and trying to do real pure kind of gable forms mm -hmm. that are kind of separated with little flat roofs that are hyphenated between the gable roofs. And then those flat roofs take on the steel elements that give it more that industrial vibe as well. Wow. Um, yeah. Now I'm noticing that on the outside of the house though, you're not doing a peel and stick here. This is actually a loose laid product. So is this not your air bearer on the outside of the house? Yeah, so great question. So in the vast majority, pretty much all of the projects I've done up to this point, we are using that exterior weather barrier as our air barrier. And we're immensely fussy about trying to maintain the continuity and maintain that seal. But in this case, the air barrier and the vapor barrier are actually on the inside of the walls which is uh, something fairly common with passive house construction, which is what we're doing here. And so in this case, um, this is simply a weather resistive barrier, WRB, keep gotcha. water out. So see, got my vest. And then as I'm walking up to, this is the front door, right? It is. I'm, I'm noticing, man, you've got some serious details going on here with your insulation at this doorway. What's going on here, Greg? Yeah, so uh, again, with passive house and really any high performance construction technique, you're trying to minimize your thermal bridges as much as possible, if not avoid them. And so the typical detail here that we're all familiar with is the concrete. This is all slab on grade. The concrete would come out to the outside face of the foundation and then the doors would sit on top of that. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we're trying to avoid that thermal bridge because that concrete will conduct the cold into the house and so um, the doors are all suspended up on top of this sort of railroad track, if you will, uh, that's bolted down to the foundation. So that's doing the structural work. And then prior to setting the doors, we'll fill all of those cavities with insulation. Uh -huh. And then there'll be a metal pan, well, a, a, a water barrier on top of that and a metal pan on top of that. 
um, to encapsulate all that, but we'll avoid that thermal bridge. Gotcha. And then when you walk in here, giant open space. Interesting. No, you haven't framed your interior walls yet. Is that right? Yeah, it's uh, unusual, right? Um, so the the primary reason for that is this air and vapor barrier that we have on the inside that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, we want to be really fussy about maintaining the continuity of that. We want no interruptions in that barrier. And so it will wrap the entire building envelope, um, the walls, the roof, the floors, etc., continuously without interruption. Once that's all installed, we've done our blower door test, we'll fill that with insulation, then we'll build our interior service cavity and our interior walls. So again, those things don't interrupt that, that air barrier. Gotcha. Hey, can we see that? You've got a mock-up yeah. over here, right? Yeah, yeah. So you've got a yellow sheet coming up here, which looks to me like this is a uh, Stego, yeah, yeah. right? That's right. And so that's going underneath your concrete slab right here. It is, yep. And then you're taping that Stego to that, uh, to that Rissan. Uh, right. That's right. So same idea again. We don't want any interruption in our our interior vapor barrier and air barrier. So the stego that you rightly pointed out runs continuous underneath the entire floor slab, underneath all of the columns. We'll show you details on that, um, and then it will c convert to this Sega Myrex, which is an intelligent air and vapor barrier at the walls and the ceiling. And then, as you pointed out, it gets taped there, and then. Coming up to the window areas, it gets taped to all the windows, etc., as well. And then inside of that, we have a service cavity. So this is just a mock-up representing that. Two by threes for the walls, two by fours for the roof. And so this is basically a chase where all of the wiring and the plumbing can be run in a fashion that keeps it from ever penetrating or seldomly penetrating that air and vapor barrier. And then we'll fill that service cavity with insulation, more like you would do with a conventional wall. You know, our outlets will be in that and so forth and get filled with insulation and then our interior finishes after that. Okay, so double stud. So this two by six on the outside is actually doing our structure. And then you've got a space in there of a couple inches. And then you've got another two by four wall. You've also framed this all out of uh, engineered products for the most part. Looks like, Greg, because you've got some real tall walls like at your that's gable right. here. That looks like that's at least a 20 footer, right? That's right. Or maybe taller. So those walls are continuous, that's engineered lumber. And now you've got, what, a 10 inch cavity for that insulation? Yeah, 10 and a half, technically. So, um, and that cavity thickness was engineered specifically or designed specifically for our climate zone. So with Passive House, we did energy modeling to d discern you know, what was suitable for our values for roofs and walls and mm -hmm. floors. And this was the, the result in this climate zone. Um, you know, of course, in a more extreme climate zone, that wall would have to be fatter, and in a less extreme climate zone, that that, climb, that wall could be could be narrower. Yeah. Okay. So ten inches of insulation in the wall. Then you've got this air and vapor barrier here, and then you're going to put some bats also yes. in here. So you're going to have some pretty seriously thick insulated walls. It sounds like. Yeah. R50 to R60. Okay. Yep. R60. Yep. And then tell me about your trusses. So you've got a truss here. It's kind of mimicking that double stud uh, action, right? So that that's yeah. also going to get filled with um, uh, with insulation, and then you're yeah. going to use that same vapor barrier, air barrier, that Sega product all the way up there. That's right? right. Yeah, the entire underside of the bottom cords will be wrapped with that same air barrier. The insulation uh, inside the trusses will be um, 18 inches of dense pack fiberglass. Mm -hmm. Um, they won't entirely fill the cavity because we'll leave a vent shaft above it. It's a vented, vented space to maintain vapor openness. And so there'll be two by twos nailed to the sides of the trusses up against the roof sheathing, then OSB on the underside of that to form a very strong baffle that we can blow that dense pack tightly to. That's cool. Um, yeah. So then Greg, you'll wait until all of your walls then are completed in terms of uh, this air and vapor barrier and then you'll frame the inside walls yeah. and then you'll build the service core as well in board of that yes so electrical and all those other things are not in yeah. the outside wall at all yeah that's right now we will we will put up the vapor barrier and the service cavity framing before doing other things because we want to use that service cavity framing to reinforce that air barrier when we blow this full of insulation so it helps support that and tie it to the wall. Got it. So that's yeah. why you're running these horizontally across yep. there. Yep. So those will be on what? 24 16, inch on centers. 24 inch on perpendicular centers. Perpendicular to the framing at the roof and the walls. 
Um, yeah. Got it. And then you've got some. Uh, let's go outside. I want to. I want to look yep. at this detail that you've got going here. So tell me about your uh, windows and how those are getting set. And then what's this cool siding? Yeah, yeah. So the windows that we were using are um, a smart wind technology system. It's a German-based system being made in Colby, Kansas. Um, some really super great triple pane windows, um, um, very effective. These two two by fours are representing the window. Um, okay. We've got some windows that just came today. We'll show you those. Cool. But this mock-up is, is basically based on before we had the windows. So what's happening is we're, we're basically putting a sloped OSB sill in that will go up to the window. Then they we're covering that with um, Sega Fintrum tape. Okay. Um, that tape will be taped to the windows. So that's um, kind of a sub um, pan, so to speak. Yeah, it's it's the, the windows. It's the real moisture barrier okay. and, it's and water barrier. Water barrier, and then, and then um, you've this. got that guy. Yeah. And so this is actually the window sill or the sub sill for the window, which is an aluminum product that has a beautiful end cap. So bright here, guys. Sorry, you can't see that super well. And then that will get placed, and the window actually gets placed on top of that, right? Yeah, so the window actually, the, this edge of the sill pan will actually kind of fit into a little flange on the bottom side of the window sill. Yeah. Cool. And then tell me about the siding that's going on. Yeah, so a couple of things here. So this is foam core. This is not the actual siding, but this represents Rich Light, which is a paper-based siding product that's paper that's impregnated, super uh, dense, super durable. And that will line all the window openings. And, and I've used the Rich Light for countertops, so it's really yeah. it's totally moisture impervious. Yeah, they even use it for skateboard ramps, so pretty yeah. bulletproof too. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so the Rich Light's going to come out and it'll have this black finish as well, kind of like it that will. Market. Yep, yep, and a little bit thicker than this, but roughly that's the idea. And then the bulk of the house will will get bark oh, siding. Oh man, look at that! That's so cool. I like that bark siding. So what is this product? This yeah. actually is bark from it, trees? It literally is bark um, from a, it's a poplar tree that's more in the East Coast area. I think it's a yellow poplar, but don't quote me on that, but it's insect repellent. Um, and um, the product comes in uh, different sizes, but the size that we're opting for is 26 inches tall with a 24 inch exposure. The widths are four inch to four feet width. So it kind of looks like shingles, really large shingles. And we really like the contrast of this really rugged uh, texture mm -hmm. with the more sleek, rich light and steel components of the house. That's really cool. So yeah. you've got a one by four bat and then you're gonna go horizontally because this is gonna be almost like a shingled effect on exactly. the bark siding. Yep, exactly. This needs to be nailed every 12 inches vertically and every three inches horizontally. So, That's cool, so intensive nailing, yeah. Greg, I've seen your renderings, but if you'll send me one, I'll lace it on the video Absolutely. so people can see what this is going to look like. This is really cool, man. Absolutely. I love your architectural style. Thank you. So cool. All right, so then on the outside, then, that bark's going to land on this. I'm assuming this is a sheet metal that's been bent, uh, and that's kind of your receiver flashing for the bottom yeah, so that exactly. bark doesn't go all the way down. Exactly. The bark will stop about an inch short and allow the air to flow behind. And that's bark. also covering up your foam, which is... Uh, GPS. which is keeping the cold out of your foundation yep. as well. Yeah, and in addition, there's a two-inch layer of foam on the inside of the foundation that is a true thermal break. Got it. And then how are you heating and cooling the house? I'm not seeing any ductwork uh, in here at all. So we're doing a radiant floor. Um, so this is a five-inch slab with radiant tubes in it that will be both our heating and our cooling uh, system. It's all powered by a couple of geothermal wells, 250-foot deep geothermal wells and they'll feed into a heat pump and then that heat pump will make the heat in the cooling that, that gets traveled throughout the slab. Man, this is a really, really cool project, Greg. I really like it. How did you learn about all these uh, uh, techniques for higher performance and, and how did you incorporate some of this? Is this something you do in all your builds? Yeah, I've actually had a sustainability bent to all my projects for about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Let's um, turn this way so the sun will come in this variety way. Variety of different... I'm warming up in the sun like yeah, a lizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. scoot out. <laughs> um, variety of different building systems throughout the years. Um, about the last 10, 12 years, I've been really interested in Passive House and been exploring it in different forms and fashions. But in the last couple of years, I've hooked up with uh, an entity in Denver called Emu Building Science. Okay. 
And that's um, how I found you actually with those guys yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, small world. Um, so Emu Building Science offers a training series um, predominantly for builders. It's called Certified Passive House Tradesperson, CPHT. Okay. And so it's a week long course um, that you know is really geared towards trades professionals. Um, there are other certifications for designers and architects, um, but this one's geared more towards trades people. Mm. And so through that course, I got deeper into the building science of Passive House, meeting Enrico and Mariana from EMU. And, uh, and then through them, I also learned about um, a program they're trying to offer, primarily targeted to, towards builders again, that they're trying to make Passive House more palatable and more um, reachable for builders. And so they've come up with a, a library of different building systems, envelope systems, um, products, and really um, do a lot of the building science to help builders achieve Passive House more readily. Awesome. So this is a pilot program um, you know, to try to help facilitate that, that uh, arrangement. And uh, Some good work, man. So then um, I'm guessing that with Emu, you've actually got some details because you're an architect that you probably developed on how to integrate all these things and how to do this. But my understanding is that EMU, one of the benefits of working with those guys in the Passive House training is that they'll also help you as an architect develop details for wall assemblies that work in your specific climate zone so that you're not stuck with just figuring out, all right, how do I take these five products from different manufacturers and make it work for a high performance house and make sure that I don't have moisture issues make sure that I'm not putting vapor barriers in the wrong place, all that sort of thing. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So they've, de they've developed a different kit of parts, basically, for different climate zones. And as you can probably imagine, um, there's an immense amount of information, immense amount of options that you can consider in Passive House. Passive House doesn't mandate how you build, it mandates how you perform. And so narrowing down all of those variables can be pretty overwhelming. But uh, Enrico there is a, a, a true building scientist and he spent massive amount of hours in analyzing different assemblies and trying to come up with those that fit the climate zone and are more readily buildable. I, like you said, had lots of details of how I wanted to do things myself based on my experience and also based on the aesthetics that we're trying to accomplish. But using EMU systems as, a, as sort of the starting point, point and then kind of tweaking those and fine tuning them was really invaluable to, to getting to the to the level that we are. That's really cool. Greg, this is a really impressive project. Any advice for somebody uh, who's watching this and is really interested in building a high performance house now yeah. that you've built your own yeah, <laughs> and yeah. designed your own, which is pretty unique. Yeah, still got a ways to go, You're but, but we'll there. get there. But, You're getting but, there. But yeah, I, I think you know the, the biggest obstacle to overcome in any thing, new thing is the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. So I think you know doing your homework first. There's a lot of great videos out there. Matt yeah. does. There's yeah, a yeah. lot of great Passive House videos elsewhere. Um, if you could sign up for a class like with EMU for, for training, it definitely reduces a lot of those unknowns. There's yeah. still an immense amount, but, but definitely, definitely helps. Um, and I think hopefully you get a tour of some projects. You know, when you start to see it in real life, it seems to be less daunting than, than maybe it sounds like when you're talking in a classroom totally about building science yeah. and all of the data there. But, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Greg, I really appreciate you giving me a tour today, man. This is a great project. Thank you, Matt. If you want to yeah. learn more about Greg yeah. and his work, he's based here in Colorado. His office is actually here in Fort Collins, but he does work around the state. Uh, he's a one-man show, though, so he's busy. He's going to be hard <laughs> for you to uh, hire potentially because he's got uh, a lot of people interested in working with him. But I'll put a link to his website so you can get a hold of him. And he's mainly word of mouth, of course. So it's really kind of him to let us get a tour today. And I'll put a link to Emu, the guys that uh, helped Greg train uh, and do a lot of the details in this house. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.